What's up, y'all? My name is JR, and for those of you who don't already know, I'm a huge movie and TV nerd. If you're new here, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my channel. I hope you'll consider sticking around and joining the film community I'm trying to build here on YouTube. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving my reaction and review of Amazon Prime's newest series, Fallout. And just so you guys know, this video will contain some mild spoilers, so if you haven't had a chance to watch this series yet and you don't want to know anything that happens in it, you might want to exit this video now. And with that being said, no more wasting time. Let's get into it. Fallout is an American post-apocalyptic drama television series created by Graham Wagner and Geneva Robertson Duarte for Amazon Prime Video. Based on the role-playing video game franchise created by Tim Kaine, the series stars Ella Purnell, Aaron Moulton, Kyle MacLachlan, Moises Arias, Zelia Mendez-Jones, and Walter Goggins. Now, Amazon purchased the rights to produce a live-action project in 2020, and the show was announced that July, with Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy Kilter Films joined by Bethesda Game Studios in the production. Now, Nolan directed the first three episodes of the series, and Bethesda Game Studios producer Todd Howard, who directed various games in the series, signed on to executive produce alongside Nolan and Joy. Robertson, Doret, and Wagner were then hired as the series showrunners in January of 2022, and Goggins and Purnell were cast in February and March, respectively. Now, Fallout premiered on Prime Video on April the 10th of 2024. And at this point, the show has received critical acclaim with particular praise going towards the performances of Purnell, Moulton, and Goggins, and also for writing, visuals, production design, and its faithfulness to the source material. Now, at the time of the making of this video, the series has a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes with a comparable audience score of 87%. It has a meta score of 72 on Metacritic based on only 26 critic reviews, but I expect that to change really, really quickly. Um, with a user score of 6.5 based on almost 150 user ratings. Again, I expect that number to grow exponentially pretty quickly. And finally, it has an 8.7 out of 10 on IMDb with almost 5,000 ratings. So... I'll start by admitting that I've never played any of the Fallout video games, so I won't be getting into just how much the show follows the games. I'm going to say that again before all the people dive into the comments talking to me about the video games. I'm not here to talk about the games. This video is about how the show on Amazon Prime was. And now that we've got that out of the way, I had a lot of fun with this series. But, you know, then again, I tend to enjoy a good post-apocalyptic tale. I found this particular story to be interesting, though, especially where the show imagines an alternate America, one wherein nuclear advances and apparently the Eisenhower era never ended. I really thought that the retro feel to a story that takes place in the future is a rather clever creative choice, and it seems to be something that was um, also present in the game. So I guess, you know, them being faithful to the source material kind of... Um, you know, paved the way for that particular choice here in the, in the TV show. I also found the writing to be serviceable, um, appearing to lean on humor where the opportunity presented itself, though not everything attempted worked in that regard. But then again, you know, when does it ever? Am I right? <laughs> the point is, enough of the jokes hit to add a bit to the story's fun factor. I also really liked the casting in this TV show. I thought that Ella Purnell as Lucy worked really well. I also thought that Lucy as a character worked well, um, and her quest was the backbone of the story. I thought the character's determination as well as her trusting nature as she ventured from the supposed safety of her assigned vault to try and locate and rescue her dad, even after her people got jumped on by Moldaver and her band of bandits in the pilot. And it made me empathize with her while also kind of admiring her for her bravery and ultimately wishing for her success, or at the very least, her survival, which I, I think we all knew was all but certain over the course of the eight episodes, while we watched her become more and more willing to abandon her so-called golden rule in order to, you know, create, um, to achieve the object objective. 
Now, I also thought that Walton Goggins as the ghoul worked really well, too. You know, he's one of my absolute favorite actors because I believe that as an actor, he has a charisma um, that, you know, works really well in this particular case. And it made the character into, you know, what I call a likable asshole, you know, something that can be a little bit difficult to pull off, you know, but he's again, he's done it before, you know, with Boyd Crowder and Justified. Here he reminded here he reminded me a bit of Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Um and there were also a lot of other actors that appeared in smaller roles here that were also a treat to see in this particular show. Now, from a narrative standpoint, the series seems to be um almost biting the proverbial hand that feeds it, <laughs> not only imagining the way in which humanity might one day destroy itself, but also seeming to place the blame for said apocalypse on the insatiable greed of mega corporations. Ironically, like Amazon. <laughs> um, and it, it also seems to function as a commentary on Hollywood and how eventually art will suffer under the boot, so to speak, of commercial demand. And I think we can all agree that, you know, we've been seeing a bit of that happen the last you know decade or so. So I think that the show is kind of on the right track as it kind of, you know, pertains to that particular um, feeling, if you will. Now, there's also a philosophical thought exercise here um, to be had, which is the kind of thing I always appreciate in my content. And it focuses on factions, um, you know, tribalism, if you will. You know, as the season progresses, we see that there are several people looking for the same thing or person. You know, Lucy, the ghoul, Lee Moldaver, and, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel all seem to be looking for Wilzig because it's believed that he holds the secret to cold fusion, which is capable of generating unlimited power. And it's with this power that the various factions believe that the world can be saved and return to the way it was before the bombs drop. You know, on their way to the Griffith Observatory, Lucy and Maximus happen across what used to be Shady Sands. And after Maximus explains to Lucy what happened there, because he used to live there, he says to her, Everyone wants to save the world. They just disagree on how. That's essentially the main idea of season one of this show. It's the various factions formed in response to the end of the world, fighting each other over who has the right plan in order to save it. Now, overall, I give this show an 85% or an 8.5 if you're thinking IMDb score. Uh, this show was an easy binge. And I think that's because the story was good. It was clean, rather. You know, the actors played their parts well with the help of good writing. The production design was also great. Um, and I found it very easy to immerse myself in the world of the show, which, you know, kudos for them on that part. I say all that to say that I think this will certainly go down as one of the best TV shows of 2024. And I'm really looking forward to season two, which hasn't been announced just yet, but I believe it to be extremely likely. But what do you guys think? Have you seen Fallout yet? If you have, did you like it as much as I did? Or were you let down somehow, maybe because you feel like it didn't do justice to the video games it's based on? Let me know in the comments. And for those of you who might be new to the channel, be sure to like and share this video. If you really like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I drop a new video. Also, be sure to go and check out themadscreenwriter.com for more television and film reviews, as well as info on my upcoming film projects. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I got screenplays to write, and I'll catch you on in the next video.